BYD just crushed Tesla, selling 2.26 million EVs versus Tesla's 1.64 million, a second straight year of decline. Yet at the same time, cybercabs are driving through Austin with no safety drivers at all. And Elon claims there's so much to this car that is not obvious on the surface. How is Tesla losing the sales war but winning at full autonomy? What's the secret advantage Musk keeps hinting at that could change everything? Let's dive right in. Here's what the headlines won't tell you. While BYD celebrates moving 2.26 million EVs, and Tesla's dealing with an 8% drop to 1.64 million units, something fundamental is shifting beneath the surface. In early January, at least seven cyber cabs hit public roads in Austin and the Bay Area with zero human supervision. Not reduced supervision, completely autonomous operation. Elon himself posted about riding one through Austin with no safety monitoring system at all. Around the same time, 15 units underwent crash testing at Giga Texas, including brutal side impact tests. Why crash test vehicles for a category you're supposedly losing? Because Tesla's not playing the game everyone thinks they're watching. The disconnect between declining sales and accelerating autonomy testing reveals something most analysts are missing. Tesla's making a calculated trade that only makes sense if you understand where real value creation happens in transportation. Traditional automakers fight over margins that keep shrinking as competition intensifies. Tesla's betting those margins will eventually hit zero, but the company operating millions of autonomous rides will capture value that dwarfs anything possible from vehicle sales alone. The competitive landscape looks terrible for Tesla at first glance. The company operates roughly 30 Model Ys and 10 cyber cabs for robo-taxi testing. Waymo's deployed 200 fully autonomous vehicles in Austin since March, contributing to over 25,000 paid rides nationwide. Critics point out that Waymo passengers climb into empty driver's seats while Tesla vehicles still carry safety supervisors. But the economics tell a completely different story. Every vehicle Waymo deploys costs around $180,000 in hardware. 29 cameras, 5 LiDAR sensors, 6 radars, and dedicated computing units. Tesla's CyberCab runs 9 cameras, 0 LiDAR, 0 radar, with hardware costs around $44,990. That's a 75% reduction before you even consider operational expenses. But the real bottleneck isn't hardware cost. It's the human sitting in the passenger seat. As long as Tesla needs safety supervisors, scaling becomes pointless. Adding vehicles means hiring, training, and paying more people for a job the company's desperately trying to eliminate. Tesla's not failing to scale. They're refusing to scale until they can do it without humans. If Elon wanted to match Waymo's 200 vehicles in Austin, he could do it this month. But deploying 10,000 vehicles with 10,000 safety supervisors accomplishes nothing except proving Tesla can hire people. The strategy only makes sense once the human element disappears completely. That's why these early January sightings of truly driverless cyber cabs matter far more than fleet size comparisons. On January 3rd, Elon dropped this on X. And there is so much to this car that is not obvious on the surface. Combined with the April 2026 production start date, and the target of one vehicle every five seconds at Giga Texas, a picture emerges of engineering decisions that prioritize manufacturing speed over everything else. One every five seconds means 720 units per hour, 17,280 per day, 
over 6 million vehicles annually from a single production line. For context, Giga Shanghai produces a Model Y every 30 seconds. The Cyber Cab would be six times faster. Elon's compared it to a high-speed electronics assembly line. The vehicle has no steering wheel or pedals in production form, dramatically reducing part count. Two seats instead of five cuts interior work. Tesla's essentially building a rolling computer with seats, and computers can be manufactured far faster than traditional vehicles. But there's another detail that reveals how seriously Tesla's taking this. The cleaning policies. The company just announced fees of $50 for minor messes and $150 for severe contamination. Why announce cleaning policies before mass production starts? Because you don't create detailed contamination fee structures for a pilot program with 10 vehicles. You create them when you're planning for scale that makes Waymo's entire operation look like a beta test. Waymo's sensor-heavy approach creates redundancy where if one system fails, others compensate. The result is vehicles that can precisely measure distances and generate highly accurate 3D maps. For urban environments, this works incredibly well. The trade-off is cost and geographic limitation. Each Waymo vehicle needs detailed mapping of its operating area, which means expansion happens city by city. Tesla's betting that AI trained on camera data can match sensor-heavy systems at a fraction of the cost. If Tesla's vision-only approach works, they can retrofit millions of existing vehicles already on the road. Every Model 3, Y, S, and X becomes a potential robo-taxi with a software update. Waymo can't do that. Their business model requires purpose-built vehicles with specialized sensors that cost more than most new cars. Tesla's recent 2,700-mile cross-country trip using full self-driving with zero human intervention wasn't city-specific mapping. The system handled situations it had never encountered before. Rural highways, construction zones, complex urban intersections. It's the difference between memorizing specific routes and developing general driving intelligence. This distinction matters enormously for international expansion. Waymo rolling out to Shanghai requires rebuilding their entire mapping infrastructure. Tesla's stated goal is global scale, with China launches projected for February-March 2026. At $44,990 per unit, with vision systems that work anywhere, global scale shifts from theoretical to achievable. While American companies battle over robo-taxi strategies, China just changed the rules for the entire industry. They've introduced the world's first national standard for solid-state batteries in electric vehicles. Under China's standard, a battery can only be labeled truly solid-state if it doesn't exceed 0.5% weight loss under vacuum drying conditions. China's positioning itself to define what solid state means globally before the first mass-produced cells hit showrooms. The strategic sophistication here deserves recognition. China's now the world's largest automotive producer. BYD just overtook Tesla with 2.26 million units sold versus Tesla's 1.64 million. And they're defining technical standards that will govern the next generation of EV technology. Solid-state batteries promise 700 to 800 mile ranges, directly addressing range anxiety. Whoever controls those standards controls market access for every manufacturer trying to compete globally. When CATL and BYD start limited solid-state production around 2027, they'll meet standards their own country wrote. Tesla's 2025 sales dropped from 1.74 million to 1.64 million units, the second straight year of decline. The end of the 7,500 U.S. federal tax credit 
hammered demand. Q4 deliveries hit just 418,000 vehicles, down over 15% year over year. Every metric that traditional automotive analysts care about pointed in the wrong direction. But look what Tesla accomplished while sales declined. Model Y remained the best-selling EV in the US and Australia. Their supercharger network delivered 6.7 terawatt hours across 75,000 charging stalls globally, infrastructure no competitor can match. They demonstrated coast-to-coast -coast full self-driving without human intervention. They moved robo-taxis from requires constant supervision to operates with zero oversight in less than 12 months. This is what critics miss. Tesla's not trying to win a volume race against BYD. They're repositioning from automotive manufacturer to technology, energy, and automation company. When Chinese manufacturers are driving margins to razor-thin levels competing purely on price, choosing not to engage in that battle might be the smartest strategic decision possible. BYD made more revenue from vehicle sales in 2025, but Tesla's supercharger network generates recurring revenue from every charge. Robo-taxi services could generate income from the same hardware daily for years. Tesla's building a portfolio where vehicle sales are the foundation, not the end goal. Everything converges in April 2026. Mass production of the Cybercab begins. China launches Tesla robo-taxis. Solid-state battery standards take effect globally. If Tesla hits even half their production target, they could manufacture more robo-taxis in six months than Waymo's built in their entire history. At $44,990 per unit versus Waymo's $180,000, Tesla could operate at significantly lower costs while scaling globally. But honest analysis requires acknowledging uncertainty. All of this depends on software maturity reaching levels that eliminate safety supervisors permanently. Tesla's removing safety drivers now because the AI has reached sufficient reliability for controlled routes. But sufficient for testing and sufficient for millions of daily rides in all conditions are completely different standards. One high-profile accident could trigger regulatory crackdowns that delay everything by years. That's why Tesla's not rushing to expand despite having manufacturing capacity. They're pushing software toward maximum maturity, testing until errors become rare enough that operation without safety supervisors doesn't create unacceptable risk. It's the same approach SpaceX used with Starship. Test repeatedly, iterate quickly, then scale dramatically once fundamentals are proven. The crucial difference is that rocket failures happen in remote areas. Robo-taxi failures happen in traffic surrounded by pedestrians. So here's what's actually happening. BYD's winning the battle everyone's watching. Traditional EV sales and market share. But Tesla might be positioning for a completely different war, one where vehicle sales are merely the foundation for robo-taxi services, energy infrastructure, and AI-driven automation. Whether that strategy succeeds or fails won't be evident from 2025's sales figures. The answer will become clear on the streets of Austin, Shanghai, and every other city where those driverless cyber cabs start appearing throughout 2026. So here's the answer to what Elon's been hiding. It's not a secret feature in the cyber cab. It's a complete reimagining of what an automotive company actually is. While BYD celebrates winning the sales war with 2.26 million units, Tesla's deliberately losing battles to win a war most people don't even see yet. Every driverless mile in Austin, every crash test at Giga Texas, every production line optimization, they're building infrastructure for a business model where selling cars is just the opening move. This explains why Tesla's willing to sacrifice 8% in vehicle sales. 
when you're positioning to operate millions of robo-taxis generating daily revenue, deploy energy infrastructure globally, and retrofit existing fleets through software updates, short-term market share becomes secondary. BYD's winning at making cars. Tesla's betting the future belongs to whoever operates the largest autonomous transportation network at the lowest cost per vehicle. April 2026 is the moment of truth. If Tesla hits their production targets and software maturity holds, we could see more robo-taxis deployed in six months than Waymo built in a decade. If they stumble, BYD's lead becomes insurmountable. The answer's being written on Austin's streets right now. What do you think defines Tesla's future more? Winning back EV sales dominance or achieving true autonomy at scale? Drop your prediction in the comments below. If this analysis gave you a different perspective on the Tesla versus BYD battle, hit that like button. Subscribe to Tech Revolution for more deep dives into the strategies reshaping transportation and space technology. Turn on notifications so you don't miss what happens when those April production lines start rolling. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.